Hello, I am going to try to explain cognitive development because I love this particular topic and there's just so interesting, there's so much to learn about brain and I find it very helpful learning about this because I found my uh, learning style in this so if you're interested to watch, you'll find out how your brain works so first about uh, cognitive development in order for a human or a baby infant uh, to have a functional cognitive development they must have three object recognition skill first came between the age four until eight months uh, where the initial thoughts of an object came so basically if you show baby balls toys milk bottle they have an idea that these things exist in the world now they don't have to know the name but they know these things exist and then move into the next stage on um, beyond 18 months it, they gain object permanence which is they don't have to see the uh, things to know that this thing exists they don't have to see balls or glass of milk or bottle of milk to know that these things exist in the world and that called object permanence now between the age of two until three years old they start to have the idea of object immutability or objects um, distance, um, object direction, shape, or um, point of view, but it is not clear, they just gained the idea of it. For example, you give a toddler two glasses of water uh, in different shape, but you fill it in the same amount of water, but the toddler may thought that may think that um, the water is more filled than the other, one, but one glass is more filled than the other because it is on different sh shape. Now, it is okay because the idea of object immutability is not clear to them. They just started, but it is very important. These, th these three are very important. Now, moving on into attention. There are attention, span, and atten- Did I get it right, the order? Wait, I'm gonna see. Okay, I don't have time to see. But yeah, attention uh, are divided into attention span and attention selectivity. Attention span is a duration of your focus. Attention selectivity is a selective- uh, recognition of your focus stimulus or basically a uh, concept building now uh, related to attention span there are distraction and do you know that distraction actually came from two uh, causes there are external and internal external um, such as light sound and noticeable changes and internal are um, unique personal interest and basic human needs like hunger or maybe headache and blah 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 it can cause you a distraction so i just knew about that i should have known because i'm always hungry all the time and i'm like a focus so anyway uh back to the concept building when you caught your when your attention is caught in something you have an interest and it moves to memory and recall now you may think or you may thought or you may wonder about how a human um memorize things i'm going to give you an example so if you see a book and then you flip it and then you spot something and then it came to your memory now the spotting called sensory recording and it come to your memory it a, it's a short-term memory it, it came into the space of your brain called short-term memory uh, it traced the information from the sensory memory but it is not there for a very long time now Fia how do you move the short-term memory into the long-term memory you might remember or you might you the idea the information might go to the further places which is long-term memory by repeating the things or you keep seeing the things or also you have a particular interest of the thing what i'm trying to say is that by repetition or by um interest the 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 information that was in short-term memory might move easily to long-term memory because you have an interest in it and also if you have an understanding in it if you have the interest and you understand the thing it is most likely to be placed in your long-term memory now um moving on into um reasoning and problem solving now Problem solving is a very, very important skills to have as a human. And how do we create this ability? So, uh, in order for you to have a desire to problem solve, you have to have a goal. 
Because in my understanding, if you have a goal, no matter what it is that came between or in while doing or trying to achieve your goal, you will try to, you know, solve it. You will try to fix anything that came in between because you want to achieve the goal. Now, in order for you to achieve those goals or p- facing your problem, you have to be creative, original, and imaginative. Now, that is why creativity is very essential in kids. And how do we... Um, uh, build that creativity, ability, or skills in children is actually just by love, trust, and freedom in children. That is why it is essential. It is why it is very, very important for us to show love, trust, and freedom towards kids because it can grow them a very significantly creativity skills which can lead into this problem-solving skills. Now, if you have a creativity, it is also very important to have intelligence. What is intelligence, Fia? There's a lot of description about intelligence. There's um, an understanding, abstraction, logical, um, critical thinking. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff about the intelligence. Intelligence, uh, and you can search about that. I don't have to explain it. I explain that. That's just my understanding. No, that is why I said uh, having a creativity and intelligence, a, a balanced creativity and intelligence is very important because uh, people with high intelligence and high creativity are most likely to be valuable towards others because they know how to social, they, they are feeling confident about their self, and yeah, people just adore them basically. Uh, and there's also people with low intelligence and low creativity. They most likely to struggle because they know they don't have they very ha- they have a low understanding of the word, the world, and they most probably to feel insecure in a lot of aspect. And there's also people with high intelligence but low creativity. Now these people might struggle to relate on others. Um, they they do have understanding of the world, but they don't have that relatable sense so they might lack of empathy or sympathy and there's also people with high creativity but low intelligence and people like these are most likely to be insecure about things and I personally preferably felt that I feel like I'm I'm creative in a lot of way but I'm also struggling how I'm perceived in others and i'm scared like because i'm like i'm low intelligence i feel like so anyway yeah there's there's that for kind of people so uh intelligence and creativity stability is very very essential now let's moving on to my favorite process a cognitive process uh based on pj theory now i'm trying to explain you the cognitive process of pj theories and i Personally, I think it is very true because I experienced this, uh, but I'm having trouble and struggle to explain it. Okay, I'm going to try to make sense of the PJ theory with my experience because the other day I was trying to um, understand about the DNA of a person with fragile X syndrome. For start, I have never learned about DNA and I have never learned about science. Last time I learned about science was actually in elementary school and I didn't learn about DNA. So the idea of DNA uh, subject is not fitting into my schema or a pattern that I already know. It didn't exist in my schema. So how do I process this? Uh, to process new thing, we as human need a balance of assimilation, things that you already knew, and accommodation or things that you just knew new information so in order for this to process a very successful equilibration you have to have the balance of assimilation and accommodation now the assimilation was for me uh that the work of uh, or the error of the dna making in a person of fragile x syndrome was just like a movie scene that just keep repeating the same scene so i have an idea of oh i can understand i can imagine how a video error feels like and that's just how the error of the dna making looks like with that information i knew that um with the making of that repeating scene the the cell of cgg which is basically a cell in your dna is you know repeating and expanding 
over 200, which is the CGGs of a person with fragile X syndrome. So in order for me to process in new things of this bizarre thing, is actually just by adding a familiar information that I have in my brain, if that makes sense. Now that is a very successful equilibration or a new idea or new schemas that get into your head. So basically with this, I'm saying if you have a struggle or if you are struggling with new information or adding new information like studying or anything basically just try to um make sense of it with the idea that you're already familiar with because that's just how personally i think brain work so basically it that's about uh, cognitive development and i love it because i feel like with having this information i am more um easy to learn and understand things in a lot of way so yeah i hope fia this is video for me actually but yeah bye <laughs>